Hey Spanish students, this is Mark Hanish. Thank you for watching this video. If you've ever had me with lessons or if you've ever watched any of my previous videos, you know that I'm extremely passionate about helping beginners learn the language and learn language learning techniques early on so that the experience in language learning is more enjoyable. And that is the whole purpose of this video lesson is I want to teach you um, about cognates and specifically what they are and how to use them and then also how you can practice them on your own. When I'm in my Spanish classroom, especially my Spanish one classroom at, in my high school that I teach at right now, um, it's, it's, it's especially important for me at least to have a large focus on cognates for those students just because they are beginners. So if you aren't a beginner, these are, this is still a fantastic tool and resource to be practicing with because every language learner knows these words, but if you can pronounce them well and be able to listen to them, just like I've mentioned before, um, it's going to help your comprehension of the language and it's going to help you communicate right away from the get go. You don't even need to study the, the language um, in order to get these. So um, in to kind of start at this point, um, I want to give you a cognate training and what that even means. So before I talk about the importance of cognates, I just wanted to talk about what is a cognate because I'm sure a lot of people don't know what it is. A cognate is just a word between languages that have a similar root and they mean the same thing. So there's a lot of them. Okay. So there's, you know, I've heard of people saying like non Spanish speakers actually have about 3000 words that they already know just because of cognates, which is why this is so important. Um, and I list out three things here. It helps your communication listening, which is what I mentioned before, but it's also kind of immediate vocabulary, not necessarily the most important words, like not all of these words are, um, you know, of the most importance to learn right away, which is why I don't think, you know, you don't need to go through every single cognate and make sure you know them, but to start realizing, okay, what are some practical cognates that I can start out with right away so that I could get my point across and it's all about that communication piece. So that's why I'm Cognates are so huge, so vital, especially when you're starting out. Okay, so I want to talk about three different cognates today. Um, the first one is the easy one. I put the easy button on the side there. Okay, so these are words that are literally spelled the exact same way. So, for example, we'll see here like actor, agenda, criminal. Everyone can know what those mean just based on the English spelling and the Spanish spelling. Notice how I said them differently. Okay, if you haven't learned Spanish pronunciation yet based off of the consonant vowel combinations, you should go back and watch that first. Because if you say actor in Spanish to a Spanish speaking person, most likely they might pick up on what you're saying, but they it, it would be harder or like agenda. They're not going to pick up on that. They would only pick up on agenda because that's how you say that word. So that's really important that you're pronouncing these correctly. However, they are spelled the exact same way. So that's why these are huge to practice um, on your own. So there's a huge list. You can just type in on Google exact cognates um, between Spanish and English and you'll get a whole list of them. And I encourage you to do that um, even after this video. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the near exact cognates. So kind of like the title infers, it's almost, almost an exact cognate. Um, and the, the, an important part of these is to start picking up on patterns. Um, language learning in general is all about patterns and picking up on what are the patterns of the language. And these are really important patterns in the language because you can use the suffixes especially and also prefixes, but here I'm just going to outline the, the suffixes, which basically is just the ending of certain words. And if you can start to understand what these are, then you can pick up on a, what a lot of different words mean without even actually knowing the meaning. But for example, in the parentheses, I've got, um, cognates all with these endings. So you'll see sion, oso, ario, mente, ico, and to. So which is atención, 
delicioso comentario habitualmente fantástico. I forgot the accent there. En exacto. Okay, and they just give, obviously it's atención, attention. So you'll have the T-I-O-N ending. Oso means us, so delicious. Audio, airy, so commentary. Okay, and etc. You can read those, um, that list that I spell out right here. Um, these are really important because you can start to pick up on the, the patterns of the language and actually use these to infer what other words mean. But this is kind of a good starting list. And again, there's plenty of these. Go ahead and look for these on your own. And then the last one I wanted to talk about, which is really important, it's probably one of the first things that I talk about in Spanish classes, is that there are a lot of false friends or basically cognates or words that look like cognates, but they're not actually cognates. They're not connected at all. And there's a lot of these as well. I would say not as many, but there definitely are a lot of them. And you just have to be careful when you're learning this, which is why I encourage you to start looking at and using cognates, real cognates, right from the beginning to kind of use that in your communication. Okay, so the first one, really important, okay? Do not ever say, I am embarrassed and thinking that embarrassed is embarazada, okay? If you ever were to say estoy embarazada, it means I am pregnant, okay? Embarrassment or embarrassed is vergüenza, okay? And then or another example would be to record. Grabar is not to grab, it's to record. So these are false friends and you want to watch out for those, especially when you're learning, when learning right away. So kind of a, a challenge that I'm, I'm giving to my students and I encourage you to join in. Um, if you want to just give a comment on the, on this video, or if you want to get a hold of me on my blog, um, at Spanish day scratch dot wordpress.com and leave a comment there wherever somehow get a hold of me and give me um, a paragraph about a certain story using all cognates okay so right here you can go ahead and pause the video to read through this and i encourage you to do that um, to read through this video uh, through this paragraph and see how much you can understand i think everyone could understand everything in this paragraph i just talk about dogs so take a moment pause the video okay so I give you words on the top right here. So, el, la, los, las, un, una, y, and then three different verbs that aren't necessarily cognates. Well, es is a cognate, it's es is. So I guess that is a cognate, but those are all words that are pretty simple and ne aren't necessarily cognates in Spanish. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and read this. La idea de este párrafo es explicar animales con el uso de cognados. Mi animal favorito es el perro. El perro es, simila, es similar al humano. Tiene una personalidad humana. Normalmente perros tienen un collar y el collar tiene un nombre y un número de teléfono. Inevitablemente, los perros causan problemas. El perro tiene costos y beneficios. Para los humanos es normal adorar a los perros. En comparación a otros animales, el perro tiene disciplina. Mi perro es muy inteligente. Hay muchas razones a adorar a los perros y es mi animal favorito. So there I just read that, that paragraph and hopefully you were able to pick up on most of it. And I challenge you to make your own story or kind of your own paragraph about any topic that you want and start to use that list of um, cognates that you're finding online and start to put something together. Um, these, those three verbs, not only are you practicing with those three verbs, which are very, very common, but you're also kind of putting these cognates together. Um, and you can pick up on different like verbs, for example, like I put in like causan. Okay. So they cause. That's an easy verb to, to pick up on. Or adorar, that was the only verb cognate. And when I was doing this, it was actually a lot harder than I thought. So it is a challenge, um, especially for someone that knows all of these. So take your time and start to put a list of, you know, really good cognates that you can use and then make a paragraph out of it. I encourage you to send that in the comments section below. Um, so there you have it. I 
encourage you to make your own story about a topic. Um, it's a great way to you know look for practical practical cognates, and you are also practicing with the th probably the three of some of the most common verbs used in the Spanish language. So thanks for watching. Um, just as a reminder, please subscribe if these videos are helpful to you. Um, you can also check out my blog where I've got a picture down there below. Um, but you can check out the blog at spanishdayscratch.wordpress.com. And I'm also going to have future Udemy courses. If you've ever heard of Udemy, it's just like an online learning website where you can host different things and buy courses. And so I'm hoping to put kind of more in-depth things on there to help people, especially beginners, learn the language. So thanks for watching and good luck studying this week.